Our scripture study is from the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. So if you have your Bible, turn to Mark, Gospel, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Mark Gospel, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. If you remember, last week we began our Lent series, and we looked at the first chapter of Mark Gospel, verses 1 to 20, the first chapter of Mark Gospel, verse 1, it gives us the purpose of the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark. It said, the beginning of the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the only true God. We learn that the good news is a message of salvation that can only receive from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And this good news is not only for the Jews. This good news, the gospel, is for everyone. It's for Gentiles and it's for everyone. At the end, there was also, uh, we learned that Jesus gave command. He told the disciples, Follow me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. And the disciples, they left everything. They left their nets, they left their father, and followed Jesus. And this morning, I would like to share with you a testimony I experienced after this sermon. It was Monday when I was working. I was thinking about this sermon. Jesus commanded us to follow him. And the disciples, they left everything. They left their own desire and follow Jesus. I think I spoke to Pastor Paul a couple of times. Uh, ideas of making disciples in Africa, Ghana. Uh, like we have a organization that we are trying to help people to use the Bible to equip them to make discipleship. So it's a project for future. And this is discipleship making and helping the poor people with modern agriculture training. And the vision of this project is written here to see that lives are being transformed by God through discipleship training and tutoring in modern agricultural practices, resulting an increase in the kingdom, resources, and decrease in poverty. So it was for me to fly next week. Everything is all organized. Next week, Sunday, I will preach, and then Monday, I will fly into Ghana. I discussed with my company to change my holidays, even from August uh, to end of this month. Because as a leader of this organization, I have to be there for registration and also to look that Dick's uh, project will go forward. The reason why I'm sharing this testimony is that since my youth, it's on my heart desire to help the poor. So if I share this good news to people, people who are hungry, people who are poor, and just leave them, I don't think this is the will of God. Because God wants us to fill them with his word and also 
with uh, physically helping other people. We need to train these people to help themselves to make good life and also understand the word of God so that they will also commission other people to do the same thing for others. Making discipleship is a good plan. But there is, here I am. And to be frankly, I don't know when I am going because of some situation. But I, what I need is to obey God, to follow him, follow his desire, but not my desire. So in the work, I was just thinking, oh, I speak with these pastors. There are young pastors who are also uh, expertise in agriculture, and they are willing to help. Everything is set already. But if Jesus says, follow me, you have to leave all your desire, all your plans, and follow Jesus. So this is just an introduction and what insight I had last time. So this morning, we are going to continue our second Lent series, and we are going to look at true Mark Gospel, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Before I read this message, I would like to ask you three questions. The first question is, who is Jesus? And what did he do? And the third question is, what does it matter? What does that matter? Well, we thank God he has given us the Bible. And the Bible answers us all these three questions. So I will begin reading from verses 35 to 41. The Mark Gospel, verses 35 through 41. It says, that day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in a great boat. There were also other boats with him. A pharaoh's squad came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stand sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if you drown? And then he got up, rebooked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much this morning. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for the life that you have given for us through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that today you will speak through me. And I pray that as a church, hearing your word, Father, may your world transform people that we may never be the same. But I pray that anything that would distract us from your word, may you protect us and bless this sermon in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So uh, today's sermon's title is, Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And I think the answer is right from the beginning of the Mark Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the beginning of the good news about Jesus, who the Messiah, the Son of God. It means the good news of the Messiah, the anointed one, the one the prophets have been already prophesied that he's coming 100 years ago. And people were looking forward for this Messiah. So in this text, we see that Jesus is God who came 
in human flesh. He is 100% man and also 100% God. John said, if you remember, in the beginning was the word. The word was Jesus. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. That means Christ created everything that exists. In this world, he created all. And he has also the authority to control creation. He has authority to control the death. He has authority to cast away demons. He has authority in his own teachings. He has authority to also over diseases. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. He has authority on the earth even to forgive sins, which only God can do. This proof to us that Jesus is God. But he came to this earth in human flesh because of me, it's because of you, because of our sin to die for us. And in this passage, he demonstrated his authority over nature. He shows his power over winds and over waves. If you start from 35, he said that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. I think because of much multitude hearing the word of Jesus, even it was difficult for him to get down from his boat. So he ordered the disciples, let us go to the other side of the lake. This is where the Lord demonstrates his power over nature. And this incident happened at the Sea of Galilee. You see at the previous chapter that Jesus was preaching. He was preaching in parables. And here he was preaching on a boat all day long. And Jesus was preaching the good news. So this sea of Galilee is about 200 me 213 meters be below sea level and also surrounded by hills. So when wind blowing across the land intensified close to the sea, often causing violent and unexpected storms. The disciples were people who were fishermen who had spent their lives fishing on the same lake. But during this great storm, they were panicked because they haven't experienced such a stream storm before. Verses 35, 36, you see here, Jesus gives command. Then they obey this command. Let us go to the other side. And going Jesus on the boat, there were also people on boat following Jesus. And along the way, Jesus slept because he had preaching, he had healing, working all day long. And I think my brother and sisters, it's not easy, even as a human being, to preach one day, you need a lot of energy. And see Jesus with crowd, with multitude, preaching on healing till the evening. Jesus slept. He was asleep on a, a cushion, as small like a pillow, that he put his head on just to lay down. It's something fishermen, they use in their boat. So when someone wants to lay down, it's not a comfortable place but just to lay your head on. And I think here, we see Jesus, the full humanity in Christ. On that way, problems occurred. A huge wind. This happened to show that Jesus is Lord and he has power to control the creation. 
The wave was so strong and the boat was filled with waves and water and it almost drowned. They were in darkness, the disciples. The boat was covered with waves. But what did Jesus do? Jesus got tired like you and me as we work a lot and got asleep. That is the truth of the humanity of Christ. But what somebody may ask, what is this so important? If Jesus is a spirit, he is a, a human 100% and also God 100 what is the importance of this, Brother John? Christ's humanity is crucial. Why? Because his humanity was like ours. He became a man because of us. He entered into our situation to act as our redeemer. He became our substitute, taking upon himself our sins in order to suffer for our praise. He also became our champion, fulfilling the law of God on your behalf, on my behalf. In redemption, there is a twofold etching. Our sins are imparted to Jesus. His righteousness is imparted to us. He rejects, he receives the judgment due to our imperfect humanity. Jesus did never sin. He is a sinless, but because of me, because of you, because of the world, he came and suffered and died in his humanity. Jesus had the same legitimation common to all human nature. In his humanity, he was tired after a long day of preaching and healing. You remember? Jesus sweated. Jesus was hungry. He wept when Lazarus died. He endured pain. He was mortal, capable of suffering in death. In all these respects, he was like us. That is the central truth of the gospel. That Jesus is the anointed one, the eternal son of God, who took a human nature to accomplish salvation. So, to reject this truth is to reject all hope of reconciliation with God. Why to receive it is to receive God himself. All this going on, Jesus was so calm and sleeping with wind, with extreme storm. They asked him, Jesus, don't you care about us? We are going to die. They were terrified that they are going to die. But I think most of our time, the silence of God is the hardest things we face in our Christians' lives. It's like when we are praying and it seems God is not hearing our prayers. It looks like there is no change for whatever you have been praying for in all circumstances. What you are going through. It looks like, did God hear my prayer? Is God in the near? Things are getting worse and worse and worse. But he hasn't yet responded. At times, it's a test for faith. Because there is no answer. And we ask why. I remember one of my friends. We visited the wife for hospital for about a week. And the last week, the doctor called us and said, brothers, the wife is not going to make it. In three days, she's going to die. We have been praying. We have hope. Because this lady was a godly woman and our hope is that one day is going to recover 
from these diseases. So my friend just fell and I just helped him to raise him up. And you were asking, why God? Such a good lady. Why should this happen? She had three sons. But we cannot answer it. Why did God allow such things to happen to us? Why did God didn't come and help my friend in such time? Where is God? People used to ask, where is God in the pandemic time? Where is God? Where is God in terms of war? You don't know such answers. You don't understand why this is allowed to be happening when you really don't understand such things that happen. This is where we need to exercise our faith. Faith and belief in the Lord when I don't even understand it. Because if you understand something, that God is doing something good for you. It's not a faith. Faith is where you don't understand what is going on in your life. And you believe in God. That even though I don't see him. But I know that he is rare than anything on this earth. Even though I don't feel like he is hearing my prayer. But I believe he hears every word that I speak. This is the faith you are talking about. But when you don't understand what is going on in your life, we need that faith. Another thing is why good God allows good people attempt to suffer. They go through trials. They go through difficulties. Why? And at times, the wicked people, they are enjoying their life. Why we ask these things? We don't have the answer. But we have to have the faith that God is with us. So I come back to the test. So the disciples, they didn't understand why the Lord could be sleeping. And they were right to be terrified. But on the other hand, they were not right to be terrified. Because in this text, Jesus told them, let us go to the other side. So if God commands you, let us go, it means he's faithful. He's going to fulfill his promises. But I think because of uh, fear, they even forgot what Jesus told them. Jesus gave them command, let us go to the other side. They should not be afraid because Jesus was on the board. He was on the boat. There is no need to be fear. Even storm on difficulties. He is with you. And always I say, if a Christian, you go through difficulties, temptation, tries, is something, it's not comfortable. But the Lord is bearing you up. He is strengthening you. I have experience in my own life. When I look back, what has happened to me, I say, God, thank you. You are equipping me, strengthening me to move forward. Otherwise, there will be challenge and you can never face it. David said, even though I walk through the shadow of death, I will not fear evil because the Lord is with me. If the Lord is with you in our troubles, we should not be afraid. You remember the scripture? This morning, Psalm 107, 23, because they were also on the sea. And when there was storm, they cry up to the Lord. And the Lord redeemed them. And they give glory. They give praise to him. May be they remember the Psalms. That God has power to rescue them. They knew that Jesus has power to heal. Power to cast away demons. Power to raise the dead. Remember, he raised Lazarus from the dead. But they never seen an act in a situation like this. When Jesus delivers someone from danger. 
the power of Christ. He has the power to control the creation. That is the God that we serve. Jesus will book the wind. He spoke to the wind to obey his will. That is wonderful. As he told Lazarus, raise up from the dead. He commanded the wind to be quiet. And the wind listened to him. Wow. Jesus stopped the wind and the water. That's the supernatural power of Jesus. That shows us that Jesus is God. So what is Mark telling us about what Jesus did? He is the son of God, proving his control over creation. He is the creator of the universe, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Don't you have faith? Faith is not something you see. Faith is something you don't see, but you believe that God can alone make it. That is faith. And if you believe it, he's going to show his power to you. Don't you have faith that I can care for you? Why are you afraid? Here, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And most of the time, as a follower of Christ, we can go through difficulties. Seems like we have lost our faith. We lost sight of the power of our mighty God. At times, it looked like only the circumstances around it. This is what we are looking. You don't see God as a bigger as our problem. You don't see that God is always at work. The disciples fear in that circumstance. I think it was a lack of faith. Their fear was the sign that they had less faith. If you have fear, it means you are lacking faith that God is going to take care of your situation. It's so important for us to know that God loves us. He cares for us. He is in control in all circumstances in our lives. Even though we don't understand the situation, but we will not be afraid. Verse 41, that will be the last point. Now, they were very much afraid. They were not afraid anymore with the storm because Jesus calmed everything. But now they are afraid. Why? They see that they are with God. Along inside their boat. The creator of the universe was with them in the boat. The disciples feel greater fear in Jesus' presence. On the calm of the sea that they experience why the storm when you see god in your spiritual you see his glory you see that god is without sin and you will see yourself as a sinner you will see yourself that you don't deserve even to come closer to god and i think we can be also afraid when you see God, you see the glory, and you see that you are a sinful person. It's terrifying for a sinful people to know you are in the presence of God. And they say to one another, who then is this? Even the wind obey him. They were talking about the one whom the prophets had prophesied about him, the Messiah, the son of God. The answer is that God controls the creation. They need to know the Lord is always their protector. God has compassion and he protects his people from danger. God protects us and takes care of us, of his children. This is the deity of Christ. And Jesus asks his disciples, do you not have faith? 
It can be also applied to unbelievers. Maybe you are here today and you have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says, as you hear this message, Christ is knocking at your door. You say, here I am. I stand and knock at your door. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come to you and be with you and eat with you. Jesus is not going to push the door on you. He wants you to know his presence as you hear the good news. Are you ready to open your heart to receive the salvation, the free gift? He wants you to know his presence. Jesus says he is here today. And his words say, if you hear my word, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be safe. So this morning, if you are here, you have heard the good news. It's an offer God offered for you 2,000 years ago. Jesus died for you. And it's a gift. And right now, as I'm speaking, I'm asking you, this gift, are you ready to receive it? If you are ready to receive it, at the end of this sermon, you can see me, you can see the church officials, and you will help you with the Bible. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, thank you for preparing my heart. Thank you for helping me to deliver your word. I pray that you have spoke. And Father, we are listening. We pray that your word will transform us. We pray that as we are going outside, may we listen to you. May we know in all circumstances. May we exercise our faith knowing that you will never forsake us. You will never leave us alone. Father, we thank you that in all storms, in all troubles, we believe in faith that you are with us. Father, we thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.